Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Shadi Zeddy Hanna, and I'm the head coach of esports here at Keanu College. I'm super excited to be able to present tonight's stream to you guys tonight. This is our Call of Duty season opener, the first game of the NACE Star League National Association of Collegiate Esports. This is our very first game of the season against the Blind Buccaneers, a strong team to start things off. But I don't know if you can hear from the other room next door. We finally moved into our new facilities, so if you hear a couple cheers and hollers, it's you're getting a real live visceral experience this year from the players in the arena playing out of the practice room right now all together. And it's a great feeling to be able to be in this space and see and feel that energy on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to get started with our first map here in just a moment. We're just waiting for the teams to get set up in the lobby. And to go over... The layout for tonight's game. Our first map will be Hardpoint on Fort. Going into the SND on Embassy. Control on a silo. Back to Embassy for the Hardpoint. And then back to Fort again for the SND. So five maps, but only three unique in tonight's matchup. But you can tell the players are wanting to play comfort for that first game back. And, you know, all, all credit and respect to them. This is a... Pretty defining game for the season. It's always nice to start things off with a, a victory under the belt. And you know that everybody's going to want to play to their outs and, and play what they're comfortable on. We're going to get a chance to introduce ourselves to the team when we get back into things in just a moment here. The lobby just reset. There are going to be a few familiar faces for those of you that are fans of the Huskies, longtime fans of the Huskies. You're going to see a lot of names that you remember, a lot of names that you're familiar with. But you're also going to see some new ones as well. Our new rookie this year, Alex Shoku Rendell, will be starting off in tonight's match. Um, Shoku was a pretty big pickup for the team, and the guys have been scrimming with him for a while and have been really enjoying seeing what he's been able to output and what he's capable of. Uh, and we're going to get started here in just a moment. I got. Coach, Coach Trick staring at me through the window, giving me the thumbs up. It's time to get started. For those of you that are Keanu College fans that are new to the stream, maybe new students, maybe you know this is your second year and you're seeing the posters up on the wall, you're seeing the signs out in the hallway. I do want to thank you, each and every one of you, for tuning into the stream tonight and supporting the Huskies. Supporting the Huskies. I'm um, just hearing some noises here from the lobby. It looks like the players are getting ready to jump into things. We're going to switch over to the game feed in just a moment here. Here we go. First map, Hardpoint on El Bagra. And I apologize. I will be doing a little bit of leveling as we go. So try to keep the noise at a <laughs> manageable level as we get started with things. Let's have an opportunity here to introduce ourselves to the Huskies. We get to meet the players in just a second here. As you can see in the number one spot, Brody. In the number two spot, we have Kurz. Third is Great Witness. And lastly, number four, the rookie, Shoku, taking the stand. Keanu Huskies versus the Blind Buccaneers. Good luck, have fun, and let's get right into things on the hard point. Keanu is making an early push south side. That's three members already, and we're going to see first blood drawn soon as Lando takes out Shoku. Kurz will get the refrag, though. Brody finds one on Mike. He's got sights on Lando. And so far, the Huskies able to get pretty dominant control of the point. And they're going to start chasing out kills, trying to trickle in the opponents. Now, if you're new to competitive Call of Duty, if you're new to 4v4 CDL rules, and you know some of these maps and strategies might be a little unfamiliar to you, the long and short of it is you're playing a best of five. You're rotating between three different game modes on a bunch of different maps. And there's a lot of strategy to how you want to approach these gunfights. This isn't just your running and gunning quick play like you might be playing on your friend's Xbox at 3 a.m. This is a very strategic, very well thought out organization of plans and structure that these teams are implementing in order to accomplish their mini goals. You'll see if you're looking at the minimap there in the bottom left corner of the screen, you will see those little symbols, that lock symbol in the top left means that a new hard point was spawning. And the Husky is now taking control of that hard point. You'll see in the top left, that score starting to rack up a little bit. The first team to get 250 points on the hard point will take the map. And it's about slow, incremental takes. And Brody, nothing slow or incremental, but his gameplay, a quick 2K for him. And he's going to clean it up. He's going to find a third on Munch as well. And Brody is just running around wrecking havoc right now. 
already 8-1 and one to start things off is a strong way to start off the game, strong way to start off the season. And it's exactly what you want to see if you're a Huskies fan. It's Kurz going to gun down Deserve and hold on to that hard point. Another 20 seconds to go, and the Huskies should be able to get at least a few more points out of this one before that next spawn. Now, a good portion of the strategy in Hardpoint is not just being able to get onto the point, but also how you rotate to the next one. You'll see the Huskies, they already know that next spawn is spawning north side, and they've already got man on it. They've started rotating. They're holding aggressive positions. Look at look at Kurz right now. He's already defending that position, so that even though Blin, they're walking onto the point, it doesn't matter. It's too late. Kurz is already there, and even though they're getting traded, the Huskies are still going to be able to come out on top. They just have a better read on the situation. Michael will take one, and now Great Witness is trying to hold himself. That will be the Buccaneers getting the retake. The Huskies didn't make it easy for them. They're already holding a 60-point lead right now, 65-point lead. You can see them waiting for those respawns. They're going to group up together. They're not trying to give any isolated 1v1s. Trying to take these spices as a team. Brody, nice gunny. It's going to be the Huskies pushing their way into Northside, trying to see if they can retake the spawn for the next one. They're going to go for their picks and make that determination. Do we want to play for this point or wait for that next spawn? And they will actually get back on it. That's another 15 seconds worth of points. And that is a beautiful execution there. Huskies coming away cleanly from that take and getting ready for that next spawn. Oh, just mispositioned that gunfire there from Brody. Wasn't able to handle that recoil and does get taken down. But Kurz will find one to his own. Unfortunately, gets caught lacking as he's climbing up on truck. Gets taken out. And I just noticed Great Witness currently holding a 9-1 KD. This is a nice little performance from him, and I think I might have jinxed it as he drops drops again. It's his second death of the game. But all in all, in all a 50-point lead is not something to be mad about, and the Huskies are not really showing any signs of tiredness or fatigue. They just keep up that pressure, and it's constant being able to hold on to these points. One thing I'm really liking about the way the Huskies are playing is they're always setting up these crossfires and these really strong positional holds. Like, Great Witness has so much trust in his team, he's going to position himself on this outer and just hold that and get so much info for his team. You know, at any moment he can just peek out here and he sees one, he takes him down, and he's drawing attention, right? Look at Lando. Lando has to full rotate behind. Deserve going to full rotate behind. They might try to play for the pick, but it doesn't matter. He's just holding onto it and he almost finds three. It was a nice little switch there. But unfortunately, Lando will take him down. And that's what pressure from a good team with good spatial awareness and spatial control can really do. Beautiful little play from Great Witness to pull up some points. And the nice refrags coming out from the Huskies are not going to give the Buccaneers the chance to get started on this next hard point. Probably the slowest we've seen the game so far. Nobody has touched yet, and that might change in a second as Brody touches his way onto the point, finds that kill, and the Huskies will start racking up points again. And while the Huskies are kind of going back and forth here against the Buccaneers, well, those of you that are new to the collegiate esports scene and the collegiate Call of Duty, we will quickly talk about, you know, what the rest of the season looks like for the Huskies. Uh, our Keanu esports teams, each of them plays in multiple leagues throughout the season. This one here that you guys are watching right now, right here, is the Nay Star League. In addition to the Nay Star League, you'll also see the Huskies competing in Canadian Nationals later in November in CXP Call of Duty. And very likely, you know, fingers crossed, if everything works out okay, we'll see the return of CCL Collegiate Call of Duty in the winter and get to see the Huskies shine in that. So if you're a big Call of Duty fan, don't worry. One week, one night a week might only be might be the case for the next two months, but you're gonna have plenty of Call of Duty to look forward to as the season continues over the course of the year. Cano now trying to fight over truck. Lando takes down one. Actually ends up finding the second one. It's a nice shot from him onto Shoku. And that is gonna give Blin some much needed breathing room on this point. Good awareness from Kurz, but just not finding the shots. He's going to rotate and makes the wrong read and gets shot in the back by Lando. However, in the midst of all that gunfire, Brody was able to get himself onto the point and start racking up a few additional score here. <sighs> Nicely done getting onto that hill. Blinn going to start pre-rotating. Let's take a look over at the next point. And Blinn finally starting to take these advantageous 2v1 fights, 2v2 fights. And it's starting to do some work for them, but it's just not enough to handle the gunny from Kurz. Look at him go. 1v2. Finds a 2k, catches out Lando, gets the third, a quick shot to the head from Kurz, and that's going to put the Huskies back on the point. 180 points now, getting very, very close to that 250 mark.
23 KD for Brody. Already just putting in a ton of work in this first game. Brody returning back for the second year with the Huskies now all the way from New Hampshire, the United States of America. All this way to the subarctic northwestern corners of Canada to play collegiate Call of Duty. And ever since joining the team, he's been an unstoppable force in the league. Done some absolutely great work and leading the team right now, not just in kills, but in spirit. Commanding, look at those plays the Huskies are able to make as they're executing onto this point here. Now it's going to be three versus one on the hill. Deserve fighting for himself, but Munch with a nice flank. He's going to be able to find one. Brody believes drops the airstrike, and now he's going to free up a bunch of space. And now going to try to make the hero play. Gets his shots down, but realizes doesn't check his ammo. Runs out of bullets. A nice little nade from Great Witness as he finds one, finds two with the headshot onto Michael. And that's going to be Great Witness taking the point. A hundred point lead for the Huskies now on the hard point. Great witness just holding his ground. We can see a little bit of a little bit of a skirmish here as the Buccaneers decide they're gonna cut their losses and fall back and prepare for that next hill spawn. This is the last hill they really have to make a difference in this game as the Huskies pushing 230, 20 points to go. It doesn't take long to rack up those 20 points, especially when you're playing the way that the Huskies are playing right now. Let's see, Brody, can he find that entry fag? Finds one, but gets immediately taken down by Michael. The Huskies now. Got spotted out by Munch. Some nice little movement from Kurz, though. I don't think he's spotted yet. And actually, might be able to get a good angle here on Deserve and find that opening pick. Oh, but doesn't isn't looking in the right place at the right time. Just Call of Duty timings. Oh, and the unfortunate knife onto Great Witness. No ammo in the tank. And he took his opportunity. You have to respect it when it happens, and it happens for the right reasons. You have to respect it. Michael caught it out, but Shoku just can't stick his shots. Chucks in the nade to put some pressure down. Gets traded out. Nice little kill for Brody. He finds one, finds two. Brody breaks onto the point. Buccaneers have to force. Brody finds the third. 243 points. The Huskies should have it right here. Brody with a massive 3K. That's going to put him to 34 kills on that first map. And that'll be the Keanu Huskies taking the first map of the day. And a clean 250 to 150, 100 point gap for the victory. What a phenomenal, phenomenal play. We'll click this thing back to Brody as we see. I don't believe that was that kill. I believe it was a separate one. I guess uh, Call of Duty uh, had a difficult time figuring out where the, hot, uh, the heat in that game was. But respect given where respect is deserved. Beautiful first map from the Huskies and a strong, dominant start to the season for Keanu. Now, as I mentioned, our next map obviously will be the SND and specifically SND on Embassy. This is a very fun map to watch uh, SND on. Very fun map to watch SND on. And SND seems to be one of those modes where the Huskies can find some really, really strong rounds in, in match, matchups where they're favored. They go crazy. And in matchups where... You know, you might not expect them to come out ahead. They're still able to take some really strong wins against some really good teams. So definitely their most exciting map to watch. We're going to cut to a quick break as we wait uh, for this next lobby to get set up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more Collegiate Call of Duty in just a moment.
who's ready for some more collegiate call of duty and we're back on embassy for the search and destroy it's a great map and a great game mode to watch the huskies on if you're new to the twitch channel my name is shaddy zeddy hannah head coach of the esports program here at keanu college in fort mcmurray alberta and i'm super excited to be able to present to you keanu huskies on search and destroy because let me tell you, it is a sight to behold. We're going to get started here right now with the Huskies starting on attack. And they're going to make an early push into B. An aggressive start and an aggressive play. And already that plant coming down. There is going to be some warning shots fired by Lando. Deserve holding the tight angle on the outside of the door. And Brody's aware of it. He's going to be able to pre-fire, finds one. And although Lando escapes with his life, Brody will be able to take down one. And free up some space here now, Brody on the prowl on sight. You can see in the back right witness just holding Shoku, watching that flank. Lando will, will take down Brody. Kurz finds one, chucks out the nade to create some space. And Kurz with the util kill. And they've got eyes on deserve. The shot's just not sticking. But there's absolutely no out from that situation. You're a 1v3. You're caught in the crossfire. There's nades getting chucked at you. You are gone. And the Huskies will take the first round of the SND. <clears throat> now, if you're just tuning into the stream now and this is your first time watching SND, the rules are simple. One team plants a bomb. The other attempts to defend them from planting the bomb or defusing it before time runs out. And it's a really interesting game of cat and mouse where one team at one point, you know, you start off as the attackers and you have to push into the defenders, but once that bomb goes down, it's almost as if the round flips on its head and now you have to defend the bomb from your opponents who are trying to clear it. The Huskies now at the start of this round will start on defense and already finding that first kill to slow down the Buccaneers. Brody will find a second onto the reserve. Kurz finds one on the outside and already Lando left stranded. Gets caught out by, I believe, I think that was great witness for that last kill. I didn't quite catch the nameplate, but it doesn't matter. Huskies sweep, clean sweep on the defense. And it is going to be Kurz actually finding that final kill of the round. Already 4-0 and zero to his name. And Kurz, for those of you guys that are returning Huskies fans, will remember is the SND SMG GOAT for the Huskies. Some phenomenal games uh, from him on this map type and some really insane clutches. And I'm sure we're going to see plenty more uh, this season as well, already coming off from a very strong start 4-0 in this round. And the Huskies again on the attack, going to look to hit that B site fast and strong. They know their timings, they know how long it takes to get to that point. They know how their opponent wants to play, they're already going to start planting. Lando gets taken out by Shoku. Kurz finds one on the back end as well, and the Buccaneers already a down two, trying to get that defuse. Good info gained by Brody as Great Witness finds Lando. And only one remaining. The Huskies know exactly where he is. It's just a matter of holding and containing him. Michael going to try to make a move. And that pre-fire comes out as Brody is just swinging around walls, trying to find that kill, trying to pad those stats. He doesn't want to sit around and wait. He's on the hunt. He's on the prowl. He's holding the door. He's pre-firing. He's pre-firing everything. And Michael just trying to Get out with his life and save a little bit of dignity, but nothing you can do. There's just too many men. Huskies, take him down again. Another clean round for the Huskies. And already looking like a very dominant SNT. Back to defense now. And it doesn't really seem like the Huskies are having a strong side or a weak side this game. It kind of just feels like they're taking a lead and running with it. But I do really like how their defense played out last round. And I'm hoping we can see a similarly strong defense this round as well. Dead silence popping already. Brody going to hold the serve on the wall. Finds him immediately. Beautiful crosshair placement from him. And Mikel caught sleeping on the side there. Brody trying to find all four. Shoku's not going to let that happen. Takes down one. Munch gets the refrag onto Shoku. 
And they are going to hunt him down. They know where he is. They're trying to contain. And actually, Munch is going to be able to repossession himself quite well. He's sitting on that second floor right now. Just hiding. You can see Kerr is holding that window. They know. If they didn't catch him on the low ground, he's got to have gotten high. I believe Brody heard that. He's just not sure which direction he's going. He's playing audio right now. Shots fired. That will give them all the info they need. The Huskies now 25 seconds remaining. Just don't need to do anything cocky or stupid. They just can play time. And Munch will go down Brody. Nice shots from Brody. Headshot for the kill. And Brody, what am I saying? You know, he's not just going to sit there and wait for the round to end. He, he, he wants the kills. Like, he's going to go for the kills because he can get them. And that's the thing. Like, if you can get them, you should get them. See, I can't get them. So that's why I don't get them. You know? But Brody gets them. First to six on SND takes it all. Best of 11. It's a pretty intense and strenuous game mode, but it doesn't. the Huskies really don't make it look that way when they're already up 4-0. Moving on to round number five here. Kerr is going to take the bomb this time, and it looks like they are going to pivot into A. Munch finds an early util kill onto Great Witness. And Lando taking down Brody as well. It's a, a bizarre change of pace in the SND as the Huskies really haven't gone down this early. And actually deserve going to be able to find Kurz as well. It's just Shoku. Let's see if the young rookie can pull off the Miracle 1v4. That would be a phenomenal way to start the season. Don't you agree? He takes down 1. And the Dream is looking alive. He knows where the bomb is. He knows his opponents know where the bomb is. But does he know that nobody's guarding it right now? Shoku biding his time. And Lando gonna take him out. And I think that was a sniper. I'm not 100% confident. We'll see here in the game replay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that explains the difference. The Bucks whipped out the sniper. And a nice little flicky from Lando. I mean, that's a good shot. Doesn't matter what team you're cheering for. That's a nice shot from Lando. And that will put the Bucks on the board on round five. Huskies back on defense. Round six. We had to give him one, right? I, I mean, I mean, you have to give him one. <clears throat> the Huskies looking like they were going to four stack that B site and deciding to go back to that 2-2 split that they've been favoring so much on this defense. They are going to make a pretty aggressive early play already, chucking some util from Kurz. He's going to make some space for Brody, and they're going to double up here. He's baiting out those shots from Lando. This is nice timing from Curtis. He might have gotten the mix-up that he was looking for. Oh, and just as he turns around, that's when Lando and Deserver are in position. He had the timing, and he just didn't take it. And gets punished. Munch and Michael spotted out. Can Shoku find the shots? But he gets crunched by three. Two remaining. Brody and Great Witness left. Brody just going to gently start opening some doors and then sticking his knife through the window. Doesn't really fit along the theme of a slow and controlled push, but that's Brody for you. Good shot. Some great witness. Finds one. Dumping some util. Brody taking some gunfire. Has to reposition himself. Great witness. Still holding. Does get spotted, I believe, by Michael. Almost finds the shots. Brody finds one. Just has to play his life for a second here. He has 20 seconds. And the nade comes out. They were still holding on to that nade. And that nade on the truck will do it for the Bucks as they find their second round in a row. Just unfortunate. Well-placed nade by Deserve. It was a great round from him. That is going to force the Buccaneers into that second round victory. Round seven. Two rounds to go for the Huskies to take the map. <clears throat> and push themselves onto the control with a comfortable 2-0 lead. Bomb picked up by Brody this time. They are going to go back to the B hit. You know, don't fix it if it ain't broke. Early pressure on door side here. 
Bomb gets planted. But do they know about the man up high? Curtis finds one on deserve. Brody actually gonna take the low ground. They're not gonna contest that high. The shot, the sniper shot from Shoku just goes wide. But Brody should be able to find the kill here. Catches out Munch. And decides not to trade that, but Munch was aware of the play and that's a great play from him. He finds his man and immediately snaps onto Brody. The Buccaneers again. Finding their third round. They've made some critical adjustments and are beating the Huskies in places where they weren't weren't finding wins before, but they're finding them now, and that's when it matters. <clears throat> Back on offense. Or defense, rather. And we'll see how the Huskies adapt now to some of the Buccaneers' decisions. They're going to force that 2-2 again. Oh, no, actually. Big adjustment being made as Great Witness pivots over. He's going to play the high ground. Shoku on low with the sniper. I'm just going to hold. He's throwing out some nades. Making some noise. And they've got Kurz in a nice little position here. He's prepped for that refrag onto Shoku. And the Buccaneers just playing a very slow early round here. I don't know I don't know if you can say default in COD. Can you say default in COD? Is that a thing? I don't know. Looks like a default to me, so I'm going to call it a default. Nice shots from Kurz. That's the that's the bomb carry. Munch gets the trade. And rat runs away from the bomb. Doesn't want to get immediately traded out. Shoku gets taken down by Michael. Munch. Is that his on the second of the round? Looks for a third, but Brody. Just better gunplay. And the Bucks have to plant. We'll see if Brody can find the positioning he needs. Goes and double checks A. Realizes that they're on B, but realizes maybe a little too late. Oh, he caught my kill there. He saw him. Sticks some headshots, but he can't find the kill. Great timing from Brody onto Lando. 1v1 now. Oh, and Lando. So close for Brody. I realized he just killed Lando. It couldn't have been Lando. It was Michael. Brody had a great timing onto Lando, but Michael had an equally good one onto Brody. I was so hyped for the clutch, but. Post, but no cigar. <clears throat> we'll see how the Huskies decide to respond to this now as Blinn have kind of pulled the miracle run here and gone from a 4 0 deficit now to fourth round straight. Husky's going to go back to this B hit. They're going to go fast. They're going to go strong. They know Michael likes to push that zone. Lando found one. Just going to hold door. That's a good double swing. And Great Witness left the only man alive now. Sticks them shots onto Deserve, but it's going to be very difficult to defend that defuse alone. And he finds the Zerv, he actually shuts down the defuse. Oh my gosh. If Great Witness found that kill into Lando, that might have actually been playable. And I think the Buccaneers have finally found that response to that fast B. They're controlling that mid. They're making it very difficult to retain control of the site. And they're getting those quick flanks that are just putting so much pressure onto the Huskies. And now the Huskies on the back point as Blinn takes, puts themselves on match point here. Two straight for the Huskies to win it, one left for the Bucks. I mean, this has been a pretty impressive reverse reverse sweep. I don't know if you can call it a sweep since we weren't on match point, but a pretty re impressive run from the Buccaneers to put themselves in this point. They're going to do that slow entry again. They're going to wait out those nades, going to wait out some of that util. Wait for the Huskies to get eager. Just 
It's a slow game. Nice kill from Kurz. Finds one. Choku just holding that doorway. Knows that there's pressure. Oh, but the timing. Looks around at the wrong time. Is going to be able to catch Michael. He catches him. But just too late. Michael does find the shots there. 3v2 now for the Huskies. They're holding really solid control of this B site. Nobody's watching the bomb. They're just kind of watching the site. Waiting to see what they see. They know the Buccaneers want to clear a site before they contest. This is kind of a gamble for the Bucs. They only have 15 seconds left. They don't have a ton of time to make that decision. And Curse on the other side of that doorway. He knows with 10 seconds left. They're going to likely go. They're going to go for a defuse. They're going to go now. And beautiful timing from Curse. That's going to seal out the round. Can he find the kill to clean it up? Yes, he can. Brody puts it to a 5-5 match point. Great round from Kurz to hold that one together. And beautiful patience from the Huskies, too. They've been playing fast. They've been playing strong. And it was a great pace set at the beginning of the round. But just being able to adjust that. Adapt to their opponent's adaptation. Slow things down. Don't get antsy. Don't get eager. Wait for that mistake. And capitalize. And it's a beautiful way to pull this game back into arm's reach. Last round for the Huskies. Huskies back on defense. Like I said, their defenses have looked pretty good so far this match. They are actually going to accelerate the pace a little bit. They've been playing slow on defense. They know their opponents have been playing slow. And look at Brody already so deep within enemy lines. He's finding some crazy timings here. And Brody finds one. And that's bomb too. That's a big pick. Joku taking some gunfire. He's under pressure. He's trying to get out, but he gets taken down. Great witness trying to find, but just better shots from Munch. And that's an unfortunate mishap. You know, just getting a little eager. Forcing that fight when maybe you didn't need to. But Brody is going to be holding very tight defense over the bomb here. I wonder if he's going to be aware of this wraparound, though, from Michael. This could really seal the round here. One v one. I think Hers heard that audio. And he tries to go for the knife and he gets it out to Munch. Brody finds my kill. Two v one. Kurz just holding Lando in position. He's got him held down. Just don't give him the kills. Play your life. And that's exactly what he's gonna do. The Huskies are gonna take the map. There's no time for the Buccaneers. They're just gonna camp it. They're gonna hide it out. And that's gonna be the SND going the way of the Keanu Huskies. Oh my god, that was tense. <laughs> I was getting ready for a comfortable SND. We're up 4 0. We're chilling. I'm chilling. I got my water here. I'm just cruising, enjoying some Call of Duty. We made it exciting. Let's call it that. We made it exciting. How's that? How's that for you? One map left for the Huskies to take their first match of the NACE Star League season in a clean, sweet fashion. We've seen some incredible performances already this game from, you know, our returning vets and our rookies as well, putting in some good work as well, playing that position, you know, mostly playing some defensive AR sniper roles right now, some more control based roles. And I'd love to see what Shoku can do when we put the controller on the control map, really put him in an element where he can shine. I'm going to take a quick little break here. I'm going to rest my voice before we jump into this next and hopefully final map of the match. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more Nay Star League Call of Duty.
we are back with Nace Call of Duty season opener against the Blinn College Buccaneers. My name is Shadi Zedihana, head coach of the Cano Esports program. We're now on the control on El Asilo. The Huskies had a very dominant start to the season so far. They're looking to close it out convincingly as we get to the control. The third and potentially final map of the series tonight. Now for those of you that don't know Control, probably Call of Duty's most complicated CDL mode. I'll do my best to break it down for you. There's a couple different mini games you're playing on Control. The first and most important one is as if you're the attacker, your goal is to gain control of the two marked locations on the map. If you're the defender, it's to keep your opponent off of those points and prevent them from claiming those points. Now, as the attacker, you have a couple different resources you're battling with. You're battling with time. As you can see in the top there, that, that minute timer ticking down. They don't give you a ton of time to work with. You're also dealing with lives. If you run out of a total life pool, it is a respawn mode. So if you die, you will respawn, but you only can respawn up to 30 times per map. And those respawns are shared with the entire team. So as you're attacking these points and as you're attempting to control these points, you simultaneously have to balance how quickly you're able to execute and capitalize on the strategies how many lives you commit to those points because call of duty it's virtually impossible to go deathless in this game so how long is going to take you how many lives you're going to commit and dealing with your opponent's defenses and rotations and situational awareness as well starting things off the huskies going for a little a heavy a push into a b split and i like that strategy I would have liked to see them commit to A after they got such a dominant start there and just a couple gunfights going the way of the Buccaneers that maybe the Huskies had hoped hadn't. Now time will stop ticking down if the Huskies are on the point and they will actually gain additional time once they completely capture one of the points. So that's why the Huskies are going to start to prioritize this A side again. They want to get that bonus time so that they don't have to stress. They don't have to play too fast and dump too many lives into the point. And these critical kills here from Shoku and Kurs are going to grant them the ability to do that, that extra minute on the timer now. And the Huskies are going to start making their way, setting their sights onto that B site. I like this little positioning from Shoku. I want to see him capitalize on this. He's got a beautiful flank here. Ah, but his team is popping off too hard. They don't even need him. Look at him go. One by one, they're just getting taken down. Shoku finds the shot onto Munch. Nice headshot. Eyes on Lando as well. Tries to find the shots, but Lando will get... I don't even know what you call that. The through the wall, through the tarp? I don't know. It's a nice shot from Lando. Husky's making some solid progress at B. Brody treating that SMG like an AR. What is that effective range? That is crazy. So he wins the long range and loses the melee. I like that. That's, that's what I want to see from my SMG player. Husky's now 50 seconds left. They've already got three or two ticks out of three. Brody making some noise. He's trying to draw some attention. Gets shot down by Michael Munch. Takes down Kurz. Only six lives remaining for the Buccaneers. Ten for the Huskies. You have enough time here where you can start to play for those trades. And if you're going one for one, eventually you're going to burn them a respawns. It's a vi viable strategy for sure, but you don't have a ton of time. Oh, he didn't see the tip of the barrel. The tip of the barrel was sticking out of the door, but he couldn't quite grasp that. Huskies will touch. Munch forcing his way onto point. Gun down by Shoku. Beautiful awareness from Shoku. And that's going to be the young rookies sealing out the round for the Huskies. Keanu up by one. Now, Keanu starting on defense. And arguably, the defender's job and control, depending on which way you look at it, is a bit easier. You know, you kind of know where your opponent has to go. They have to walk into you. You get that setup time. But the way that you can play the attack is by trying to draw pressure and pull rotations by hitting different sides of the map at once. And that's kind of what the Buccaneers are going to do right now is they have this very strong mid push. They're going to try to pull some pressure, try to divert some attention and get those early frags and destabilize the defensive setup but the huskies are just far too strong and confident right now to be 
significantly taken down and they're going to be able to hold this mid zone very carefully and very strongly you can see they've committed Kurz and Brody the two top gunners of the set so far to that midpoint and Munch where are you going buddy bro forgot to put his glasses on before he left the house he's just walking blind right now Kurz will take him down and Michael camping in bar Munch will take him down but Michael doesn't even find the refrag and the Bucks are a little shaken up right now. You can tell in the way they're playing. Just not able to find their footing. Kurz is deep in the enemy lines. He's just running circles around them. They have no idea where this man's at. He's just killing them left, right, and center. Look at him go. Michael finally going to kill him. Oh, my God. That was, that was something. Brody gets a little eager. And Michael will get the trade. And that is going to get the Bucks onto point now. Starting to pull some attention now to that B site. Now, usually on Elisilo, you're going to see teams prioritize that A site. Try to build a life advantage and then dump lives to trade on B. Just because it's a little bit harder to control. As you can see, the Huskies very quickly retake that site. But control does give you a lot of room for variability and flexibility. There is no one way to play control. But the way I recommend is to play the way Great Witness is playing it. What the heck was that? Double kill for him. Five seconds left. Four seconds. And the Huskies might actually get the timeout here on control. 0 0.9 seconds left and Munch will touch. And that's going to keep them on. But Shoku just taking them out one by one as they run away. Deserve belly flopping onto the floor. Munch touching the point. is going to get taken down. And that's going to be the round going to the Huskies. A clean defensive effort from them. 2-0 now for the control. Oh, and I'm seeing it in chat now. Wallbang. Why did I forget that word? Come on. This is what happens when you play card games in League of Legends for a living. You just... You develop no useful vocabulary for esports casting. <sighs> Add it to the lexicon. Wallbang. You're learning, I'm learning. We're all learning together, chat. Brody pushing Lando. Oh, that's Kurz, actually. We'll find one. Takes down Deserve as well. Nice refrag from him. Avenging Brody. I guess you could say that was Deserved. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Yeah. No, Kur Kurz died Kurz died for my sins. That's, that's on me. I apologize for that. Nice kill from Great Witness. Finds one. Finds two. And Jetty is cooking right now. Actually, this is a... Uh, this is nice to see. I like I like that from my boy. Huskies completely secured that B side. I think they took what I said personally. I'm telling you, control. There's no one way to play this map. There are patterns, there are habits, there are metas, but there is no absolute in control on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. You can always mix things up and play to your strengths. That's exactly what the Huskies have done. The life total is even, but they do have quite a bit of time to break their way onto this A site. Now, one thing to keep in mind strategically is that once you've fully captured a point, your opponents know you only have one place to go. And as long as they're able to get a decent setup, they can kind of just hold that and make it very difficult for you to touch the point. As you can see, Lando just kind of holding that spot. Double kill for him. Actually, it was deserved. That took down Kurz. And because they know that the Huskies have to push A, and because they know that there's only so many places you can push A from, they can kind of just create a very dif difficult to break through defensive trap and force you to just be better mechanically. Thankfully, the Huskies have shown that they can be when they want to be. And oh my God, Brody, what was that? And it's those little mechanical differences that are just gonna get the Huskies onto the point, that better gunplay. It's going to allow them to break onto this A site and try to cap it. Munch gets taken down by Shoku. Munch has been... I think Munch is just a little... is a little lost. He left his GPS at home. Ran out of data. These things happen. And it's nothing to be ashamed about. But it might cost you the first game of the season. As the Huskies retain complete and utter control of the map. Keanu.
goes 3-0 on the control. After an 100 point lead on the hard points, a clutch 6-5 victory on the SND. I'm losing my words. On the SND. And now the 3-0 sweep on control. It is safe to say that the Huskies are looking dangerous this season. Let's take a quick look at the scoreboard there. 20 dropped for Kurz. I think he dropped 60 on the day. I have to double check that. I don't want to lie to you all. But I think definitely dropped 60 on the day. It's a great first start of the season for him. Keanu coming out swinging in this first match of the Naystar League. Quickly review our schedule for next week. For those of you that are eager to see more Call of Duty, there will be a, CC, a CXP tournament this Sunday. Whether that will or will not be streamed is still TBD, but there will be a CXP tournament this Sunday. And I'm sure, you know, if we're unable to do an official broadcast, we will get one of the players' POVs for that. So make sure you're following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's just at Keanu Esports on everything for information on the upcoming CXP tournament. And next week, we'll be back with the Nay Star League against St. Edwards University. We look forward to seeing you all in our chat again next week. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning into the stream and supporting the Huskies on their first big win of the season, of which there hopefully will be many, many, many more. My name is Shadi Zeddy Hanna, head coach of the Keanu Esports Program here in Fort McMurray, Alberta, and it has been a pleasure hosting and casting for you all tonight. Thank you for tuning into the stream, and have a great night.